Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. If you're a current subscriber, don't forget to hit that notifications bell. Drop a like, drop a comment on the way out. That does help the channel. It helps the algorithm. For you, it's a small thing. For us, it helps us grow. It helps us continue creating content and remaining in the space. So guys, let's talk about some money flow. Let's talk about the Binance Turkish connection and what I'm doing is currently in this video, what we're going to be doing is following up on the previous money flow video and we'll be discussing the current movements from the beginning of this year. So that's the first of the first 2024 until the current date being the 14th. So all of the data is accurate, it's up to date. So let me bring up the section in question. And what I want to do is introduce you to the World Wide Web of Lunar Classic CEXs. Any CEXs that deal with LUNC on a major scale enough to get on my radar is in this money flow. And it looks very confusing and I can understand it's daunting, right? Money flow can get confusing, but don't worry, I'm here. We've got the tools back. And we're back at what we're good at. Now, what I want to do is explain to people what these CEXs do. Now, holding a substantial amount of LUNC is not a good look. And we know shining a light on it previously uh, with Binance, I believe, got BitQuery in trouble. And the likelihood is they were told to remove it. When we asked to get listed again, they wanted money. They didn't really respond. We've got the tool. It doesn't matter. But what I'm saying here is when you apply pressure uh, with factual information like this, it it really helps the situation. So what I'm going to do, this here in the center is BTC Turk. And like I was saying, you need to understand how these CEXs shuffle Luna Classic about as to not have too much in their overall balances in their wallets. Now, we're making it very easy on our money flow because you just need to hover over the wallet and you get all of the information uh, that you require, which I think is really good. Uh, it used to take ages just going in and out of stuff and you'd have to do all sorts of different stuff. Anyway, side tandem, let's push forward. So you've got BTC Turk here. So what I'm going to do is highlight a very specific transaction. So if we click here, we can see that they sent a considerable amount out and this has ended up down here. And this is a very peculiar wallet. We don't have a name for this wallet. I thought we did, but I don't think we do. It's a very peculiar wallet to say the least. So this wallet's actually currently holding 124 billion uh, LUNC. It's a considerable amount. So this has sent 878 million over to Binance. And then if we come in, we come in a little bit deeper and we get on this transaction, you're looking at half a trillion coins. OK, so it's gone from BTC Turk. It lands at this really strange wallet, which is kind of like a mixer wallet. And then suddenly half a trillion coins are sent to Binance. So here we go. We can follow the arrow over and we land at the Binance hot wallet. So we can see that going in currently is 359 billion, but going out is 513 billion. So if we highlight that transaction again and we take a look at it, 513 billion came in and 513 billion went out. So what they do, and just bear with me here, let me highlight this. So everywhere you see a red arrow is where it's sending funds out. So then what's happening is it's cycling these between multiple CXs. And we've seen this many, many times before. So you're seeing going into crypto.com, 129 billion. Once again, seeing more going into this wallet. And if we look over here and we take a look at some of these ones, you can see there's a considerable amount just going out in drips and drabs. And it adds up very quickly, especially when they're using these bridge wallets. And it's a very interesting situation that you need to do this, right? If we look at this off of the bat and we say to ourselves, well, why are they burning? What do they achieve by just burning revenue? Nothing. So what's the plan here? This is what a lot of people are asking. And honestly, myself, I don't think any of us are currently prepared for what's going to happen. What I do know is CZ is a forward planning man. He is going through 
Court case after court case after court case, he's having his passports removed for Canada, for Dubai, for different places so he can't travel. He's going into these things head on. I think he needs a positive wind as he comes out of all of these different court cases if he makes it. Maybe this is his positive win, suddenly coming back and restoring LUNC. Because if we remember rightly, it was CZ who warned against a reverse split. I remember very well because I reported on it. Um, a reverse split for him was a bad idea. Why would they be so interested? So now I ask the question of why and what need do they have to consistently keep circulating coins? So if we go back to BTC Turk once again, so what we're looking at, once again, this is a time frame from the beginning of this year till now. So this has all happened within the course of the past two months, 14 days. So this is a lot of happenings. These are a lot of coins moving. So once again, like I said, highlight BTC Turk, and we can see how interconnected it is. It is more or less interconnected with every single exchange. So what is this peculiar Turkish connection? Now, when I do a deeper dive into things, it seems that this more or less looks like some kind of tax loop, some kind of loophole uh, where the funds aren't actually on the exchanges. They're just sort of moving around. So therefore, do they have to declare those as taxable assets? How does that work? I don't really know those sides of things. I just know you would. This is all purposeful. None of this is just nilly willy sending coins around that there, there's a lot of taxes when it comes down to stuff like this. So them doing this is a artificially inflating the volume, which we love. We'll continue to love it and they can do it as much as they want. We need as much volume as we can because we've just got a ton of outflows and no one's building anything for this blockchain. Thus is bringing back Lunkdash. Thus is bringing back a on-chain wallet for you all to use uh, that I've been using in my other videos. Now, I think this is all very interesting stuff. I think this is all very interesting stuff. And I think if we keep following the money, we keep tracking it and we keep looking at some of these bigger transactions. Oh, by the way, the wider line, the bigger the transaction, um, if you hadn't guessed that already. So like 67 billion here, just shifting between the hot wallet back to BTC Turk. So stuff that's coming, it's, li it's funny because you can kind of see it full triangle here. So you can see the triangle event going round, okay? So these are all heavily interconnected. Now, what I want to do is go back to this wallet here because this is a very interesting wallet. And if I just zoom in and I grab this wallet, look how interconnected this wallet is. What I call this is a crown wallet. The reason why I'm going to call this a crown wallet, you'll see very, very soon as I pull this up. You see how it begins to act as a crown to all of the different points, all of the different CEXs. And like I said, these are all of the CEXs um, that realistically deal with LUNC. You've got KuCoin here. You've got HTX here. You've got the OKX Hot Wallet. I mean, if there's a CEX worth knowing about LUNC, it's here. Everything you would need to know, the Binance Deposit Wallet. It's a peculiar situation by bit. So once again, this Crown Wallet is is moving a lot of coins around the hot wallet's moving a lot of coins around and what need is there to realistically keep moving coins around so guys let me know what you think about all of this let me know what you think about the crown wallet let me know what you think about btc turk and let me know what you think about this mysterious 500 trillion that keeps cir circulating around because there's a common misunderstanding that binance only has two trillion coins i beg to differ i think they've got more closer to around four trillion coins before BitQuery went offline, they had 5.5 trillion LUNC. That's all just floating around between different CEXs, different wallets, and different points of access. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this pans out. I've seen a lot of you are asking me to go over the, the TGF wallets that Edward Kim uh, brought forward, and someone else asking me to go over the Lunk development fund validator to see if they've actually funded any developers and I can answer that one off the bat. They they haven't. There's no developers to fund and developers that have been funded. You funded them, right? Exactly. So it's all really interesting stuff. What I'll do is I'll get hold of the, the wallets and all of the different information retaining to uh, Ed's 
TGF guard situation thing and we'll go over that in a money flow video i'll give this another month and we'll see what's going on with this um very peculiar movement patterns money moving guys that's all i've got for you this evening this evening this morning this afternoon who knows when i record these videos right guys stay safe stay humble stay aware and as always i'll catch you in the next one